Arsenal have had a £40 million bid rejected for right-back Ricardo Calafiori, according to reports coming out from Italy. Manchester United are on the verge of signing Delict, and Delict wants the move and he's pushing for the move. And how Anthony Gordon changed Liverpool's front three. We've got so much to get through. Make sure you are going down, smashing that like button. If we get 500 likes on this video, it's a bit ambitious, I know. If we get it 300 likes, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Make sure you have subscribed to the channel. We are steamrolling our way towards 9,000 subscribers. We are 302 subs away. And nearly 83% of everyone who watched yesterday's video was not subscribed. So what are you waiting for? Go down, hit that subscribe button. Now, we'll start with the big news that's come out in the last hour. Arsenal see £40 million bid for Ricardo Calafuri rejected. Arsenal have lodged an opening bid for £40 million for Bologna's Ricardo Calafuri. The Gunners this week have gatecratched their rage for the centre-back and now Italy are out of Euro 2024. Have made their move. According to Correa Diello Sport, who are actually a very reliable uh, source of sim the likes of Fabrizio Romano in the last few years quotes with a number of their a number of their stories uh, with regards to it can be and it is reliable news. The Gunners have sent a monstrous proposal for Calafuri, but Bologna rejected the bid. It then goes on to say the Serie A side are holding out um, out for more as forty percent of the profits from the sale will go to former club Basel. Chelsea are also in the race um, and Bologna hope to sp spark a bidding war to ramp up the price. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Arsenal defence is very, very strong. You know, you don't have to be a, a football expert to, to look at how strong their uh, defence has been. Last season in the Premier League, they had a monstrous campaign in terms of uh, clean sheets. They only conceded 29 goals. You know, that their centre-back pairing of the likes of Gabriel and Saliba is arguably one of the best centre-back pairings in Europe. And, you know, Saliba, once again, is, is continuing that form into the Euros. I haven't watched too many of Brazil's games during the Copa America, so I can't really comment on, on Gabriel so far during that tournament. But... In terms of them, this is the team they played last game of the season against Everton. What Calafuri will add is he can quite easily solidify that left back position because, as well as Tommy Asu, as well as Kivior have done when they've come in in Zinchenko's absence, I still feel Calafuri is much, much, much better than, than Tommy Asu and, Calif uh, and, and Kivior. And they're not bad defenders by any stretch of the imagination. What he will also give is a strong um, backup to Gabriel if, for whatever reason, he does get an injury. I think last season, Arsenal were quite fortunate with injuries. None of this first 11 that you see today really had too many problems. They might have missed a couple of weeks here or there, but not, not any big injuries. If they were to get a big injury, you know, it's reassuring to know that you've got a very, very, very good centre-back um, in your squad. And I, I, do you know what? I don't actually think Calafuri is that much behind Gabriel. I know Gabriel was was very, very, very strong last year. Um, very, very, very strong in the Premier League. He, he had a fantastic campaign. I actually think he was probably better than Saliba overall. But when you've got a player like Calafuri, who potentially could be joining Arsenal, who's can play left-sided centre-back, can play left-sided midfield, can play um, can play left-back, who is only 22 years of age, who kind of fits that young profile, who's versatile, which is exactly what Mikel Arteta wants. You know, can play four positions, has three years left on his contract. Of course, he's left-footed. In terms of his stats last season, he had, he had a relatively good campaign with Bologna, you know, Individually, he had a great campaign. He's got Champions League experience. He's got Europa League experience. You know, he's played for a number of clubs in um, in Italy. 
I think he really stepped up on the international stage during the Euros and now can now can hopefully, well, for him, get a move uh, to the Premier League. Last season, he got, you know, 29 games at centre-back, six games at left-back. But throughout his career, he's been very, very much in a number of different positions. He's played nine games at left mid, 49 games at left back, 43 games at centre back and two games at right back. So you can see the left side is his favourable side, but and left back is probably his favourite position. But knowing the fact that you've got someone that can play even as a left midfielder, you know, and we know how much Mikel Arteta loves that fullback to invert. You know, he got the assist to a beautiful goal um, equaliser against Croatia at the death. Can he potentially bring that that Euro form into the Premier League? I think he can. I think he is a top, top player. No, all jokes aside, I think he is a very, very, very good player. And I look at where, where Arsenal want to go. This is the sort of signing you need to make to, you know, get to the next level and keep pushing. As it stands right now, you know, there is a number of clubs after him. You've got Chelsea, Tottenham, Arsenal, Liverpool. Manchester United, Juventus, Inter Milan and AC Milan all looking at him. And notoriously, Italian players don't necessarily like to leave Italy. There's been a number of players throughout the years that have stayed there due to, you know, they, they prefer it. But there has been the occasional England player, Italian player that's come over, Jorginho, you know, the likes of Di Canio, Gianfranco Zola. There has been some, but... There's a lot of greats that should have come but decided to stay. So if Arsenal can get it done, it will be a very, very, very good signing. Now, we're moving on to Manchester United, and they are in advanced talks now with Matthias De Ligt, Dutch centre-back from Bayern Munich, obviously was at Juventus before. And it looks like Man United are trying to start this Dutch revolution, bringing in Ten Hag, bringing in Ruud van Nistelrooy and the go-ahead Eagles manager. And it says Manchester United could wrap up the signing of Matthias De Ligt for around 30 to 35 million plus add-ons. According to Fabrizio Romano, the deal is being worked on this week and personal terms are being discussed and not expected to be a problem. He wrote, De Ligt's agent, Rafaela Pimenta, is working on the deal. She is negotiating with Manchester United and I can guarantee um, that she is that that she that, sorry that the contract is not going to be a problem. Man United no delict is on a big salary at Bayern, but also he's keen on the move and won't um, and won't create an issue. So personal terms are being negotiated, are advancing. So look, I think this will be a very good signing for Man United. You know he knows obviously he knows he knows you know Eric Ten Hag from his time at um, Ajax, where he you know Eric Ten Hag probably had his best years as a manager so far. I think De Ligt, for me, you know, I don't think he's lived up to expectation just yet. But one thing that we need to think about is the guy is still only 24. He's gone to Germany and won a league title. He's gone to Italy and won a league title. You know, hasn't really, I don't think he's featured a game at the at the Euros yet. Um, he, I think he's to the date is the youngest captain in Bayern Munich's, uh, sorry, in the Dutch side's history. And it looks like Bayern Munich's replacement will be uh, Tar from Bayer Leverkusen. I think this is a good signing. You're talking about a right-sided centre-back who can play both on the right and the left, who's got a lot of experience under his belt in, you know, three different leagues. He's played 117 games for Juventus. He's played 117 games for Ajax um, and played 73 games for, you know, Bayern Munich. He's already got um, 42 games in the Champions League in his career which is exactly what Man United want to get back to. He's got some Europa League experience. You know, he's got, he brings that comfortable playing out from the back sort of ethos that Man United are, are looking to, to build under. He looks like Varane is going to be going to Italy. And you can have a back four potentially of Dallo, you know, De Ligt, Martinez and Luke Shaw. I don't think that's a bad back four. You then got Onana sitting in the net. You, then, you know, all of a sudden you got Bruno Fernandes. You know, Rasmus Hoyland. It looks like they're going to get Joshua Xerxes over the line as well. So they are starting a Dutch revolution. I still think they need an out and out DM. They need a real replacement for the likes of, you know, for, you know, the likes. I, I, I just think Man United need 
They need a replacement for Varane. They've got that in Delict. They need a replacement for Casemiro in the DM. And they probably need another forward, which they're getting in Xerxes, as well as a right winger. If they if they can get all that done, I think Man United will have a very, very, very strong season. Um, I think they'll have a very strong season indeed. Now, one of the latest players to be linked with Liverpool um, is Gordon. Now, this, this signing... If I was a Liverpool fan, I would be all over this. I'm a big, big fan of Gordon. And I look, I'm going to hold my hands up. When Tottenham tried to sign him a couple of years ago, I wasn't really familiar with his game. That being said, I, I, I'm i a big fan. You know, I think he's got a lot of physical attributes that Liverpool need, and that is raw pace. Now, he can obviously, his main position is left wing. He can play right wing, and he has played centre forward a few times for Newcastle. Only made one appearance for England at the Euro so far. In a Newcastle shirt, he's played 64 games, got 13 goals and 11 assists, 24 GA in 64. You know, got his big move for around £50 million from Everton. I think off the top of my head, he is an Evertonian. He may be a Liverpool fan, correct me if I'm wrong. But if that, if Liverpool get this signing done, I think that is your replacement right there for Luis Diaz. Similar players, but I think overall, Anthony Gordon's end product is just a little bit better. Um, for me, you know, Luis Diaz last season doesn't really, it doesn't really excite me too much. You know, Gordon's, you know, 23 years of age, just turned 23 on his contract at Liverpool, uh, sorry, at Everton. He's got, sorry, at Newcastle, sorry. He signed a, a three-year deal uh, back in uh, January, 2023. He's got two years left on his contract. Um, according to transfer market, there's 59% chance Liverpool go in for him. He's valued at around 60 million euros. I think if Liverpool could get him for around 45 million, I think that's a very, very good signing. And it gives Newcastle money to go back in and look at, you know, they're going to keep, hopefully, according to New, Newcastle YTK, they're saying they're hopefully going to keep Alexander Isak and they are hopefully going to keep Bruno Grimares. So that's positive things for Newcastle. I know it's not, you know, not exactly what you want to hear when Anthony Gordon is being linked to Liverpool, but I think overall it's a... I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Let me know your thoughts down below. And I think he will. I think he does improve Liverpool. Make sure to drop a like. Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you all soon.